Hello everyone, this is Luke. Um, I just wanted to share with you tonight about something that I've learned from reading Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah especially Isaiah 59. It's a, it's a wonderful chapter. I've been reading it in Hebrew language uh, using uh, the website called Bible Hub and it's a very uh, helpful uh, website to read in um, the meaning uh, behind the Hebrew words and today I want to talk to you about God's justice, righteousness and truth especially justice um, you know, Isaiah 59 is filled with God's passion and zeal for justice. Um, so justice in this sense, I'm talking about opposite of lies, trickery, um, deceit, um, you know, the things that are not true. So for example, you if you um, you know um, not truthful, or you say things that are not true, or lie to people for your own advantage, for your own gain, you know God hates that. God hates that with His passion. I've found um, how much God loves justice and hates unrighteousness or lies or um, you know deceit and um, you know things that people do for their own selfish gains to take advantage of people um, this is very important because that gives us uh, a hint or understanding of who God is and this is something I've learned today tonight and it is very important that our God, who created the who created the whole world and cre created us, loves things that are true and just and righteous. So, for example, if you sell things at a right amount, or you know, you say things that are truthful, or you, um, you know, you deal whether in business or study or you know, whatever you do, you do it with integrity uh, rather than, you know, doing something for your own gain, selfish, you know, selfish gains or take advantage of other people or you know, deliberately use methods or ways or things to take advantage of other people. This is what God hates with passion, with his zeal. And there are many instances where God says, I will recompense. I will pay back every person, every nation that does evil, that that does, you know, deceit to take advantage of people. He will pay back every person and nation. And at the same time, he is calling especially Israel, his own people he chose, but I also say the same to every nation to come back and stop refusing the truth, stop refusing to do things in a right way, refusing to follow God's way, which is to be generous uh, and righteous and just. So, so this is very important that we are people of integrity, that we do things to um, that in turn will glorify God. Um, so you know, for example, I can share. You know, for example, um, in Isaiah fifty nine fifteen, it says, "Truth is lacking." And he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. So when a nation, there is no truth. And people, even if they try and depart from things that are evil, and they still make themselves, 
make themselves a prey because you know the society or the, the groups of people are so deceitful um, now he he talks about a lot of thing these things in, in the verse 14 just justice is turned back and righteousness stands far away just righteousness is so far um, and truth has stumbled in public squares so you know there's no truth it's empty there is nothing there is no truth and there is no uprightness things that are true and right is not there um, and you know and also he says um, the in verse 15 the Lord saw it God saw it and it displeased him it was evil that there was no justice in verse 16 he says he saw that there was no man no person and he was absolutely stunned it says wondered but it's this very weak word but actually in Hebrew it's more like uh, he's gobsmacked stunned astonished that there was no one to intercede or entreat or ask God what's happening here so what happened? He says, uh, he, his own strength, his own arm, brought God salvation. So God provided the solution himself. And his own righteousness supported himself. There was, there was no one who was asking for truth and righteousness and justice. So what did God do? He did it himself. And we know, you know, in the New Testament that Jesus came to the earth and he showed the way for righteousness, for justice, and what's true and what God desires. Um, and we talk about, you know, in the verse 17, he says, he put on righteousness as a breastplate and helmet of salvation on his head. You know, very famous in passage of Ephesians. But also he talks about garments of vengeance for clothing. And wrapped himself like a robe. A zeal for his cloak or robe. So vengeance here means that he will repay those who do wrong. Those who do evil. He will make sure things are avenged. Things that hurt other people. The people who you know, take advantage of the people, will, you know, God will pay back. Um, so verse 18, he says, so according to their deeds, God will repay. And he will make repayment to those who are the evil. And not just Israel, but also coastlands, other nations. So what happens is the people will fear the name of the Lord from the west and also his glory will be seen from the east where the sun rises. Um, now this is a very interesting, um, it is only a short passage that I've shared. But you know, God, you know, I've found that it's so important that we you know, understand and feel the heart of God for justice. In, you know, not only in, um, you know, our own countries, but around the world, um, especially the realm of, you know, media, politics, or whatever it is, there are, we are bombarded with um, lies, you know, lies about, a lot of things, you know, I can talk about so many things, but we can so easily um, get swept away by the values of the world, you know, what the world teaches us. And it's so important that we go back to the word, go back to the speech of God. It talks about the speech of God, God's speech. We need to go back there and listen to what he's saying. So I was so encouraged to find out and understand about God's passion and zeal 
for justice. Yes, that's uh, what I wanted to share today. Thank you.